Hey viewers, I was starting to work on this bike that I just bought and check out this front wheel. It's very loose and wobbly. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. Now my first guess is that the cones are out of adjustment. Maybe the bearing's a bit worn. Another possibility is that the axle in there is broken. It's unlikely but possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, check the axle. If it's broken, go ahead and replace it. But most likely uh, just a simple cleaning, lubing, replacing the bearings, and getting everything adjusted should solve the issue. So let's go ahead and remove the wheel and we'll get started on this. Okay, remove the skewer here, unscrew this, pull this little spring off here, pull the skewer out through the back, and I'm going to slide the spring on there and slide this on there just to keep it all together and put this to the side. Yeah, this stuff's loose here. I'm unscrewing this lock nut uh, stuff by hand here, so it was loose. The cone's totally out of adjustment, so I'm going to open this up and we'll just overhaul this whole hub here. Uh, I'm going to start by removing these little rubber boots, just kind of lift them up and pry them off. Uh, not all hubs have these, but this one does. And get this one as well, and so get those out of the way. Now with the boots off, look at how much play there is in the axle. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Now to make it easier to work on it, I'm going to use a small vise here to hold the nut on the bottom side so that I can unscrew the top side here and just kind of I'm clamping onto the nut on the bottom side. I'm not clamping onto the axle. And people usually ask me about what kind of vise this is. It's called a drill press vise. It's a very shallow vise. It makes it easier for me to work on and shoot videos at the same time. So then I can start unscrewing this nut stuff on the top. Like I said, it's so loose here that I can turn it by hand. I don't even need a wrench. So there's the lock nut. There's a washer. And unscrew the cone here. And so there's the cone there. And then I should be able to just lift the wheel off the axle like that. And there's the axle, obviously not broken. So now I'm down to these dust caps here. There's a dust cap on each side. They're very, made of very soft metal. There's two ways you can go. You can leave the dust cap in there, remove the bearings out like with a magnet, uh, clean it out as best you can, and then put some grease in there and repack the bearings in there all with the dust cap in place, or you can try to remove the dust cap. The problem is, uh, trying to remove the dust cap, it's possible to damage the dust cap. Um, like I said, it's very soft metal. Uh, so it's kind of your choice. If you go to remove it, uh, probably the most common method is use like a, a wide blade flat tip screwdriver and you just gonna pry it out. Just do it very carefully. Uh, do it a little bit on each side. So try to get it out and see how it comes and I feel it's moving so just kind of pry it out carefully go around and get it out like that and I'll do the other side as well just lift it up a little bit at a time just pry it out carefully like that. And so now I want to remove the old bearings. I got a magnet here so I can just kind of pull them out of here. Some people give me flack about using a magnet because it'll magnetize the bearings. But frankly, if you're going to be doing all this work, you might as well replace the bearings anyway because they're pretty cheap. And the old ones are going to be worn. Now I can work on cleaning up the part just using like some citrus degreaser, rags, scrub brushes, whatever, and just get them all cleaned up. So I get the hub and the parts all cleaned up, so let's put it all back together. The ball bearings found in bike hubs are pretty standard. Uh, in a front hub, you'll usually find 10 3 16 inch ball bearings on each side. And in the rear hub, you'll usually find 9 quarter inch ball bearings on each side. However, there's 
there are some exceptions. So it's always a good idea to measure the ball bearings that came out of the hub. So I have one of the ball bearings that came out of the hub here and I have a gauge here from Park Tool and it has these holes here for measuring ball bearings. So right there is the 3 16 inch hole. So I can just take that ball bearing, slide it through the hole and it fits perfectly through there. So that's the size it is. So now when I buy ball bearings, I usually buy them in bags of 144 or 100 on Amazon. Uh, but you can buy ball, ball bearings usually from your local bike shop. So if you're going to be doing the work of overhauling a hub, it's generally a good idea to just replace the ball bearings with brand new because they're not that expensive. And just looking at the old ball bearings, you cannot tell how worn they actually are. So just replace them. I'm going to start off with putting grease around the race and this will help hold the bearings in place and also act as lubricant once the wheel's all built. So then just take the bearings one by one and place them in there. And then they should form a continuous ring uh, around the, the race in there. So now I can take the little dust cap here, slide this on and then using like a large socket, I'm going to use the flat side that fits over the dust cap and then use this to just push it down, just press it into place. Like that. And it should be like flush in there. Then I'm going to flip over the wheel and do the other side. Okay, so I got 10 bearings in there and it's forming a full uh, ring around the race. And now I got my dust cap, just kind of set that in place. Then use my socket to push this down into place. And so I got that done. Now I'm ready to reinstall the axle. Now I didn't remove the cone lock nut or washer from this side, but that's okay because it wasn't necessary. But if you do, you just want to make sure that when you reinstall it on here, leave like about four or five threads of the axle sticking out that side and then tighten them up against each other. So what I want to do before I install this is I want to put a thin coating of grease just on the axle itself, not as lubrication, but more as corrosion protection on the axle so you don't have just bare metal in there like that and then I'm going to slide this through here like this and then I'm going to bring back my little vise here and I'm going to clamp the lower nut into the vise just to kind of hold it like that and so now I'm going to install the cone with the race side down, obviously. And then this will screw down against the bearings in there. And I don't want to have it overly tight or loose. Just kind of get it towards touching and maybe back it off just a hair. And then I'm going to put the washer on here. And then take the lock nut on here. And then tighten this down. And I'm going to have to still have to adjust these. Okay, so now I take it out of the vise here and feel how smooth it is. And it's a bit rough. So I'm going to back that off a little bit. And so now I'm going to use my cone wrench here to go onto the cone and back that off a little bit. And then tighten it down, the lock nut there. And turn this around a little bit. It's turning nice and smooth. Feel for play there. It actually feels really good. Then use the cone wrench here, which is the real thin wrench here, to hold the cone in place and then tighten the lock nut against the cone. Like that. Now take back out of the vise and feel and that feels really good, nice and smooth, and it doesn't feel like any play at all.
And so now I'm going to reinstall these little rubber seal things in here. Just kind of slide those over here. Try to get them down in. You need to go down over the washer. Like that. And get this one over here as well. Get that out there. Like that. Okay, so now I'm ready to reinstall the skewer here. One thing to take note of is sometimes the tire is directional. In this case, the rotation goes this way. So this is the drive side of the wheel. So I want to install the skewer so that the lever here is over on the non-drive side. Like this. So then I'll reinstall the little spring here. I want the large diameter part facing onto the outside here and the smaller diameter towards the wheel and then screw this on and get ready to mount the wheel back onto the bike. Well, I remounted the wheel on the bike. There's no side to side movement on there at all. It spins nice and smoothly now. And so that is how to fix a loose and wobbly front wheel. The rear wheel is basically the same. You might have to remove a free wheel or cassette and there might be some additional spacers, but it's basically the same kind of thing. Hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button. Be sure to click the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I have a lot of fun over there. Anyway, Thank you guys very much for watching.